The automotive world is remembering Ferdinand Piesch. He died at the age of 82. Now, Piesch helped build up Volkswagens as an empire when he was chairman and CEO. He pushed for iconic vehicles like the Porsche 917. People said he was irresponsible for spending as much as he did on it. Of course, as you are well aware, it became the most successful race car in history. And at Audi, he launched the Quattro and it helped build it into a true luxury brand, the benefits of which easily live on today. Piesh also backed some expensive flops, developing the loss-making Bugatti Verion, once the world's fastest car. But this is the legacy he leaves behind. Let's think about it. The company now has a dozen brands under its ownership, from the uh, eponymous Volkswagen, VW, Audi, Bentley, Seat, all, and the way in which they invested elsewhere, places like Skoda, Lamborghini. Uh, Jack Ewing is the European economics correspondent for the New York Times. He joins us from uh, Frankfurt. Um, the way in which this company was reborn, I think, would you say reborn, rebuilt, he did it. Yes, absolutely. I mean, when he took over in 1992, Volkswagen was really in bad shape. People thought it might go bankrupt. Uh, they had had a lot of trouble coming up with a, a car that was as successful as the Beetle, and uh, and he totally redid the, the product line and, and saved Volkswagen. I don't think there's any question about that. And as he did so, uh, he, he, he generated iconic vehicles on the way. He gave us more than just a very profitable car company. He was never actually all that concerned with money. I mean, he knew he had to be profitable to keep making cars, but he just loved making cars. He was he was an engineer through and through, and his strategy always was to, to put the best engineering possible into the cars. And sometimes he went too far. I mean, you mentioned the Bugatti. There was the Phaeton, a famous flop. But he was always concentrated on making very good cars, cars that excited him. OK. Um, what would he have made of the Dieselgate scandal? Well, that's an interesting question because he sort of bailed out just before that hit. But he, he was a big promoter of diesel. And in fact, that was one of his big innovations. Uh, Volkswagen was really a pioneer in sort of civilizing diesel so that it could be used in passenger cars. And that was a big part of Volkswagen's uh, success in the 1990s and the early 2000s. So I think he would be disappointed, uh, but I think that um, he would also have to take some responsibility because, uh, as I argued in the book I wrote about this, that he was the one who really created this company culture uh, that led to the cheating, uh, this sort of... Uh, uh, right, but... Immoral. Go ahead. What, what he did in building the company. Earlier last week on Crossroads Business, we were talking about Volkswagen and electric cars. And the point was made to me that Volkswagen seriously behind in the others in terms of electric vehicles, uh, what they've got in the shop and what's on the road. He would not be pleased. No, he wouldn't. Um, the, the one thing is, I'm not sure he really liked electric cars. I think one reason they're behind is because it, it wasn't something that he ever wanted to put any money into. But I think once they committed to it, uh, he would have set very tough goals and he would be firing people if they weren't meeting those goals. And uh, they would probably be further along than they would be than they are today.